Wow, <laughs> I hear it. <laughs> oh, I built flaps into it. All right, hello. Now today I'm gonna to be talking about uh, Vario's. Now, what's a Vario, you might ask? Now, a Vario is used, in this case, this is one uh, which a hang glider pilot and maybe a paraglider pilot typically might, might use. And they're used for measuring your vertical speed. So you can tell whether you're climbing, whether you're in a thermal or not, which when you don't have a motor is very, very important. So um, this is quite a modern one, you know, maybe about five years old, but it's still fairly modern. And you can see if we bring it up like that, it beeps to indicate that we're rising. And if I drop it down, well, this one doesn't do anything when I drop it down. But if you do go down fast enough, this will make a horrible noise to indicate that you're in bad sync. Um, now this is, this one has averaging and things like that. So you can tell if you're climbing over 30 seconds a minute or something like that, which is very useful when you're scratching around really low. Now this one, this is a very old school one. This is one I used to fly with. Um, older than me, I take it. My, I think my, my father put this one together, but it's an analog Vario and it's very sensitive, much, much more sensitive than this one. I'm moving much slow. Yeah, so that one's much more sensitive than if we go down. No, this one doesn't make any noise going down either. Now, our last option is, well, the purpose of this video is to describe a DIY one. I'll just turn the volume up. This is just a little cheapo Chinese radio with a little uh, receiver tacked on top of it. And then I have put together, if I can find it on my desk, this now it doesn't go completely silent like a proper one but it's definitely got the indication of climbing and sink as well and of course the faster you're going up the faster they'll beep Just shut this one down. All right, so let's have a closer look at these. Okay, so this is the Flytech. Um, uh, th these have options to put in like an airspeed meter for doing energy compensation and all sorts of stuff like that, and record your maximum altitude and all that sort of good stuff. Um, I actually never liked flying with this because of its response, because it wasn't sensitive enough. It wasn't as sensitive is this old analog one, which um, you can adjust. So you adjust your zero rate of climb, and then you can see. Have I got it turned on? Let's turn it on now. So you could actually adjust it so it would be quite sensitive. There's a nice little tone too. I love that beeping noise. And then well, they're the ones I used to use for hang gliding. So, you know, I've got it in my head that I really, you know, love that beeping noise when I hit a thermal sort of thing. And I'm putting together this glider. I don't know if I can see that there. Very nice little glider. And um, so I built this other Arduino-based Vario here. Now, the plans... Let's see. Let's pull this apart now. To bear with me, I don't have a cameraman. So let's take the cover off this. It's just electrical tape with um, cotton wool underneath. And I'll show you why when we put the cotton wool underneath. I have hot glued this on. If I can pull it all off. Yeah, this has made a real balls of it. I should have shown everyone this before I pulled it apart. And now I find a pointing device. So 
this here is the little sensor, that tiny little object there. Now, that little box, it's got the, the two ports, so you get your pressure, pressure differential, so it can measure the pressure. And um, that's a little, I think it's HMC 5611 module, which you can pick up for our Arduino board, search for Arduino uh, barometer and you'll get this. This is the most sensitive one and it's also one of the most expensive. I think they're around 20 bucks or something like that. And then um, now if we compare that little sensor with this, basically that tiny little unit we see, it's got um, MEMS technology in it, which is micro machines, like tiny little levers and stuff. That's been built into this. And that's why this one is as sensitive as this one because they're basically built on the same um, Oh, well, similar design of the air actually pushes on a tiny little um, piece of metal and, and then the, the actual, resi the, um, this material as it gets bent, the electrical properties of it changes and that's how the pressure is sensed. And um, this old school one, although it's gigantic, does just the same job, but it's just a great demonstration of, you know, how small electronics is getting like, you know, this this sort of um, vert, you know, this sort of area it's enormous, and it does exactly the same thing as this little one. But um, oh, another thing, the battery on this lasts for ages. Uh, this battery's been on here for ten years. Yeah, <laughs> just worth noting. This one probably chews the batteries more than this old thing. Anyway, um, moving on. And then um, I've got an Arduino Nano on the back here, and then over here. This is a little uh, 315 megahertz on-off keying transmitter or OOK transmitter, um, and that basically, you know, the Arduino is reading the value of the um, of the pressure sensor there and doing a whole lot of averaging and putting it through a low-pass filter and then squirting out the resulting um, changes as a tone directly into this little transmitter here. And then we receive the signal on this other little board. That's the receiver unit. Um, it's powered on five volts and you can't really see it, but there's a couple of resistors and a capacitor added to that receiver just to smooth out the resultant single signal, which gets um, pumped into whatever audio device you have. In this case, I was just using this poxy little radio, which is, um perfect for the job. So now of course none of this is my design. The guy who designed this um, is the same guy who designed the KK2, um, Rolf, and basically I just built it from his instructions on the RC Groups post and I'll post a link to that in the description. Um, and it's pretty easy, uh, you know, all you gotta do is do the wiring and then um, upload the code and it works. I did not have too much trouble with it at all. Of course, you need some basic soldering skills or a, or a jumper board or something like that. Um, I am powering it because the Arduino Nano itself, I'm, I'm taking five volts off the Arduino Nano to power the transmitter. So I'm using the onboard regulator on the Arduino Nano. So that means I can put a two or three cell battery on here, no problems. Um, yeah, and there's there's not much else to it. It's nice and small. You could make one of these much smaller, but currently it's small enough to go on my glider, which I'm going to put lead in the front of anyway, so it doesn't matter too much weight-wise. And I'm looking forward to just doing some slope soaring with this Vario inboard, or maybe even some FPV flight. Another option you could do is rather than attach a transmitter here, you could just uh, patch this into your audio uh, audio signal and um, send it back with your with your FPV link. Um, not something I've tried, but I don't see any reason why that wouldn't work. So there you go, a little DIY Vario. I, we will try it out in the glider and um, I'll show you some footage of that. So yeah, cheers, thanks for watching. Okay, while Dad's mucking around up there, um, we're at Mystic. I said I used to do a bit of hang gliding, and um, this is the site where I learnt, learnt how to fly, basically. Good 
thing, good thing these are indestructible, eh? <laughs> so there's a huge amount of um, like astroturf, like tennis court material here, and there's a local club that pays to have all this set up. Uh, Dad's just got to get it up there, and um, their views of my hometown down there, bright. And we used to take off and then take off here, run flat out down here as hard as you can. And then I used to always turn left and, and go for this corner over here where usually a resident thermal would be. You'd watch for those trees out there moving. And as long as they were cranking and moving, you'd do a left turn and then you'd turn again and then you'd turn again and then you just keep turning right up to, you know, 8,000 feet. We're at 1,600 feet here above sea level on Launch. And um, I've been to 10,000, hooked that one thermal and just gone straight up on the hang glider. And uh, you can't see the landing paddock, landing paddock's down around the corner there. Anyway, I've got my little glider to fly, so let's go. Uh, have you got audio? The, is the audio peaking on there? Yeah. All right, so pretty gusty, and you'll have to come a bit closer, Dad, because I'm running out of lead. Right. You have to stay about there. And um, I've had this glider, I can't remember the last time I flew it, probably 10 years ago. But um, let's see how we go. Everything's the right direction. And you can hear my Vario going as well. Quickly trim, motherfucker. Too much up trim. That flies beautifully. I've got Oh, you can definitely see it going up. It'll be a, it's a rough day up there. You zoomed in or zoomed out? I'll zoom out. I'll bring it in. Now, I just heard a beep on my radio. I lost packet. It wasn't too bad. The little transmitter on there is transmitting at 315 megahertz and my radio is at 433, so. Whoa, look at that bit of lift. Straight up. Gonna turn, punch it. Can you see it, Dad? Bring it down. Some wing overs. It would be nice to set a rudder. It's no rudder on this little glider. It's 
it's going to be very difficult to bring this in. I chose the maiden to come up here at Mystic because of this nice grass carpet here. Oh, I hear that. I'm going to try and bring it in close, Dad. Try and do a high speed pass. Wow, <laughs> I hear it. <laughs> oh, I built flaps into it. Crow brakes. That's both the ailerons fully up. Hey, that works. That slows it down considerably. Just back it in. Whoa, 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 whoa. It's rough in there. And the main problem with this is going to be landing the fucking thing. It's coming over if... the car and straight up towards it. I do have flaps dialed in here, but it's a bit hard to reach. It's too fast. I'll try and dial in some flaps. Oh, now it just lifts even more. Uh, flaps aren't good because it's going to tip stall. Fuck me. Unless I just wait for the wind to die down. I <laughs> can't land it. Yay! Well, at least I got it down in one piece. Yeah, two pieces. We've got this lead behind us. So let's check out the damage. <laughs> it was quite a knock, but. So all I've done, I've broken my control arm and where it mounts on the top, but that'll glue back in. But um, she's pretty strong and uh, cheers. At least we landed it without crushing the shit out of it. It wasn't too bad. Cheers, thanks for watching.